what if I told you the Titanic never sank? What? And what if I told you that was absolutely false? So the owner of the boat, JP Morgan, actually had two boats. He had the Titanic and he had the Olympic. So White Star Line owned the two ships, and yes, JP Morgan did have interest and trust within the corporation. However, Thomas Ismay is the man who purchased and took control of the company, so we'll let this one slide. And the Olympic was a little bit older and a little bit more run down, and it was also in some accidents. Yes, RMS Olympic did receive a decent sized hole in her stern after the collision with the HMS Hawk in 1911. So, so far this is correct. JP Morgan sank the boat on purpose because he knew he would get a lot of money. What? He did it for the insurance money. But you see, right there is where it would all fall downhill. Because JP Morgan and White Star Line would be losing money, if anything. You see, Titanic and Olympic both cost around $7.5 million to build, and were only insured $5 million of that $7.5. So them sinking Olympic dressed as Titanic would ultimately make them lose $2.5 million. Another thing is that Olympic's repairs only costed around $120,000 at the time. So them sinking a ship that is underinsured would ultimately make them lose more money than it would have cost to fix Olympic. Right, but why sink the newly built Titanic when you could scratch off the paint, swap the names, and sink the Olympic instead? So yeah, no. The two ships weren't identical and both had structural differences both inside and out of ships meaning that workers would have to work day and night ripping out interiors of both ships and swapping places. Another thing is that after Olympic's collision with the Hawk, she is brought back to Belfast. This is the only time Olympic and Titanic will be together and the switch being possible. Here is probably the only picture showing a possibility for the switch to occur. They sit together in port for only 44 days. Sounds like enough time to swap names and repaint things. However, every ship has a yard number. Titanic's being 401 and Olympic's 400. When Olympic pulls up on day one of 44, Titanic has already launched and been under construction for two years, meaning everything already inside her has that number 401 on it. And if you visit the wreck today, you'll find the 401 number on the ship down at the bottom of the airship. It gets worse. Guess who was on that boat? All of JP Morgan's business competitors. Uh, totally false. None of them were rivals and they weren't even in the same business. Guess who wasn't on the boat? Who? JP Morgan. Was he supposed to be? He canceled minutes before it left. So he actually canceled a whole month before, but whatever, this isn't important. There was a guy named James Fenton, right, who survived and worked on the boat. His last words were, the Titanic never sank. So James Fenton was never on the Titanic. He's on no passenger lists or crew records. Another thing, if you still believe in the switch theory, uh, Thomas Andrews, the designer of Titanic, was on the ship the night it sunk, and uh, he died. Um, his uncle, Viscount Pierre, might be saying that wrong, um, part-owned Harlan DeWolf Shipbuilding Company, the company that built the Titanic. So if his uncle knew that Titanic was going to sink, wouldn't he have not let Andrews travel aboard the ship? I never thought he'd really do that. I'll let you decide. But one thing is for sure, Rose was a bitch to Cal, free my man Hawkley, Peace out.